What would you say to a person who says that your prophet plagiarized from the Old Testament and the New Testament and came up with the Quran? Yeah, no, it's it's uh, that's really impossible. Of course, I, I looked in that uh, looked into that argument as well, especially when I was like a is Islam critic. Uh, but when you look at the the Quran and the way it is uh, the, constructed, it's almost impossible for someone, especially when you don't have a computer. Uh, to make sure that there is like unity in it and there is a lot of unity whether people believe it or not so for someone who uh, didn't have a computer who was illiterate in a way it is impossible to create something like that. if he did it is a miracle on its own <laughs> um, but uh, when it comes to people who say he copied stuff like that well the new testament for example wasn't there yet there was no new Testament. it wasn't translated into arabic and if he really was illiterate how could he know and if there were perhaps two, three people telling him st some stories about Christianity. There is so much deep theological stuff in the Quran related to Christianity that's impossible because, again, there was no New Testament yet, so he couldn't copy it at all. It was impossible. Uh, I always see, like, uh, when I look at Christianity, I always see it as a book with a lot of truth, but not the complete truth. So where I miss some things and things are a little bit changed in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And when Islam came with the Quran, it corrected the first two revelations, so to say. So it completed my religion. And it's, of course, it's in the Quran itself. Well, today I completed your religion. Part of Jesus, uh, Isa, alayhi salam, he's of course in, uh, in Christianity, a very core person. But he is not absent in Islam because some people ask me, why uh, do you left the team of Jesus? That was really a question. And I told them, well, I didn't left the team of Jesus. Jesus is in our team as well. Yeah. <laughs> is Sharia really the same thing that most people think of? If not, what is Sharia? Well, of course, uh, I'm not a scholar, <laughs> but uh, what, I, what I know, uh, well, I, when I read and learned about Sharia, they say, well, it's a doctrine of uh, religious duties. And it's very broad. It, it has to do with uh, clothing, it has to do with food, it has to do with praying, it has to do with, with a trade, it has to do with everything. And of course, there's this small part that has to do with criminal justice as well. But in the West, and it has to do with the propaganda from way back. But up till this day, people are saying, well, Sharia is this, that. No, that's not Sharia. It's a very, very small part of Sharia. But that is because uh, Islam is a holistic concept. So it doesn't talk only about the way of the heart. It's, it's a practical religion. It really fits life here on earth in the dunya. When you look at the Ottoman Empire, for example, or, or apostasy, because that's uh, something that a lot of people talk about, right? Yeah, when you look, when you're an apostate, you get killed, etc. When you compare that, for example, to America before it became the United States, there have been a lot of people who were killed there because they left their religion, because the church there or the state there said, you're not a real Christian or we're doubting. Look at the Inquisition in Europe. They killed so many people, thousands and thousands of people. And when you compare this, for example, to the Ottoman Empire, in over the last 400 years of the Ottoman Empire, uh, only three people were, were uh, punished that way, three. And when you compare that to the West, where thousands and thousands, and, but still the, the, the idea is Islam is scary and they kill everybody and the West is sweet and nice. No, that's not the real deal. That's not, that's not factual. It's not historical, but it's, it, that has to do with propaganda. So why do we need laws from God to be ruled justly? Can't we find what is right and what is wrong on our own? No, I don't think people can do that because uh, people are very changeable. And, and when you look at the, the history, uh, and of course I'm a, a Western guy and I live in the West, when I look at the, the history of the West, the times that people thought they could do without a deity, without God, Allah, it didn't end up very well. When you look at the Soviet Union, for example, Russia, they had communism. And in communism, the state religion was atheism. And there have been a lot of ulama who were killed there because of the fact that they were Muslim and they were preaching religion and the belief in, in one God. They were killed, slaughtered in a horrible way, but also Christian monks. There were a lot of people really killed. So if people say, well, uh, religion all, always causes violence, well, look at the Soviet Union. They were explicitly not religious and they committed horrible crimes. Over 20 million of their own people were killed, let alone the other people. Uh, they, uh, even in Albania, eh, that used to be a Muslim country, of course, when they were under the communists, and for Hoxha, he killed a lot of people in China, North Korea. There are, there are so many contexts. And of course, sometimes things change, eh? <laughs> fortunately. Uh, but when you look at the, the idea of people ruling themselves without 
the guidance of God, it doesn't end up well. So I think that the only security for mankind to be guided in the correct way so that we can live in peace among each other is the guidance of, uh, of Allah, of God. Well, I think Islam is freedom because nobody is completely free. You're always a slave of something, a slave of your money or a slave of women or a slave of good clothes or a slave of whatever. Uh, then at least be a slave of, of the truth. <laughs> a real, a real freedom. What is what is freedom? Uh, the fact that you can be drunk or that you can use drugs or that you can uh, commit zina or whatever. That's not real. You, in the end, you will not end up happy. So, and that's like with also with little children. If I ask my child, "What do you want to eat?" She says, "Candy." If I would, I would give her candy all day. She will be sick. And in the end, perhaps she will die because she doesn't get any vitamins. She doesn't have normal vegetables or, uh, or proteins or whatever. So it, the fact that it seems fun doesn't mean that it is fun. And it doesn't mean that it uh, will uh, help you on the long run. So I think if you are a Muslim, try, just try to practice Islam. And uh, I know a lot of people say, when you're a Muslim, you cannot do this. That, that You can do almost everything except for a few things. And the things that you are not allowed to do have to do with your well-being. They say don't drink alcohol, don't use drugs, don't do that. And it has a reason. It's not to, to bully you or to make you feel bad. No, it's to help you to make sure that you are a happy person. If you're a Muslim or even if you're not Muslim, if you're constantly using drugs or you're using other things uh, like alcohol or you're only uh, going out, date stuff, clubbing, whatever, uh, most of them, most of these people end up miserable. I think people have to reconsider what real freedom is. The fact that, so, that there are so many pop stars in history, they were very rich. They had a lot of beautiful men or beautiful women. If, uh, and uh, they, they used drugs, they used alcohol, they did evidence. And a lot of those people committed suicide. And that's not because all these things were making them happy. <laughs> Otherwise, they would still be here. And of course, that doesn't count for everybody. But they, those people have everything in the extreme. And that's what a lot of people think. If I have extreme freedom, I will do this, this. No, you won't. And if you do, <laughs> you won't end up the way you want to. So uh, Islam is a balanced system. And it, it allows you to do almost everything except for the things that will make you miserable in the end. If we, if we don't see Islam for what it is and we don't act upon it, yeah, then we can complain. But it's, that's our own responsibility. Because I don't ever, I never saw, even when I was a very anti-Muslim uh, politician, I never saw Islam as, as something to pity. I saw it as, as a danger back then, but I still respected it in a way because of the fact that I saw it as a danger. But, I, but nowadays I see it as the truth, the ultimate truth with a capital T. And it's the most beautiful thing. So you don't have to walk away or shine away because of Islam. No, be proud act upon it, be a real Muslim. If you really believe in a hereafter and you really believe in the Creator, then you want to do everything for this religion. <laughs> you know that Islamophobia is rising in the world. How do you think we can deal with this issue? Well, I think there are two ways. Uh, one is just live as a Muslim, show good akhlaq in a way. Uh, and I still think that's the best way. If people see all these horrible things on television and they're scared or they're ignorant or whatever, and they say good akhlaq from the Muslims, they will see, hey, what I see on TV, that's not reality. When I look at the Muslims, that's what Islam is. And a lot of people don't read uh, the Quran, they don't read Hadith, they read you and they read me. So let's be an open book and the best book they ever read. Uh, I think that's very important. And of course, the other part is education show people if they are interested and they want to know more then they have to be of course good people to show them what islam is to to explain the core concepts and what islam is so i think there are two ways uh, for, for all the people who are are not muslim yet uh, who are hesitating uh, whether you're agnostic or atheist or christian or buddhist or hindu or whatever it doesn't matter uh, I, I i wish for for all these people for you at home as well of course islam and uh, not because uh, i think you're a bad person or whatever and i think that goes for most of the muslims it's not that muslims think you're a bad person if they want to convey islam to you but only like i said during the interview islam really uh, gave me peace of heart and peace of mind and uh, a lot of people think well it's very hard to become a muslim i have to pray five times and cannot do this or that uh, i know from experience that it's not that hard 
in the end, it, it made me happier. And uh, if you really are dedicated and if you really uh, follow the truth and if this is really what you believe, things go very easy. So uh, I would suggest uh, and advise people to look into Islam, study it uh, objectively, don't look at what the Muslims do, look at what the ultimate teacher, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, did, and uh, let him, in a way, convince you of, of the truth of Islam.